Texted me. Um, greeting. Done. Cell phone usage. You can uh, you can take pictures. You can record. Try not to use flash. I mean, there's already lights up here, so you know, don't blind Haley. Um, yeah, no texting, calling. You know, proper uh, show etiquette. If you like what you see up here, Haley's doing a capstone performance uh, December first and second at 8 p.m. at Stevens. So come out, see her do that. And I think that's it for me, so please give a round of applause for my partner in crime, Haley Mowry. Sit over there. So don't call us out. Don't make it weird. 
Um, but just like that, there are a couple of people here that have never been to Gettysburg, so welcome to my beautiful campus with its rabid squirrels and our endless construction. <laughs> I don't know what the, uh, what the class of 2018 did to JMR to be like, screw you, let's plow this shit over!
food, and the cashier kind of gives you your change back, and you got that big line behind you, and they're like, thank you, come again, and you can't quite get your like money organized in time, so we all just kind of crumple the receipt quarters and the four dollars and just stuff it in the wall and just get out of your That kind of anxiety, and we can just do that every day. So Gettysburg has come up with this really great thing where you just do a fingerprint, and it goes ding, and you just kind of like walk away. Here's the issue. So that whole soda that spills everywhere in your hand, right? Y'all remember I talked about that? <laughs> Guys, stay awake. <laughs> now that soda that spills on your hand, that really messes up the whole fingerprint situation. So now, you just made it through the line, you made it through the soda line, now it's time to pay. And you got that girl with the most annoying look on her face, who's like, this is my only job. I'm like, trying to be an art major, and just ringing people up here on the <laughs> Thank you, have a nice day. You go and you put your finger down, and it doesn't go through. <laughs> and you think, okay, I'll just draw out my fingers. <laughs> it's a finger problem. <laughs> draw the finger. <laughs> and you don't know what the hell's going on, why it won't go through. So you think maybe it's the machine's fault. It's not, but you're gonna give it a shot. She's trying to get the old shirt dry. <laughs> Everyone's fuming behind you, starting to get the cold sweats down your back. Doesn't go through again. And you look at the cash register lady with that face that every animal has on the ASPCA commercial. Please, I will grow my own crops to feed myself. I promise to never step foot in here ever again. Should you let me just walk away with my salad? I promise I will never come here ever again. She's looking at me like, try again. <laughs> please, please, your Italian wedding soup's threatening to fall on the floor, slamming over that godforsaken Zamboni glazed lid. <laughs> Thank you. Make it through that shit, guess what? Wait another five hours for your meals to replace and you come back and do it all over again for dinner. So that's our new bullet hole, ladies and gentlemen. Does anybody have that? Oh my god, I knew this whole thing was gonna be about food. The whole stool and water thing was for stand-up. I just assumed I had to have it. <laughs> but I'm starting to quickly realize that they don't always fill that with water, so tonight's show is brought to you by Grey Goose. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, I'm just kidding, it's Kettle One. <laughs> no, I do feel bad for the people that work in Bullet, though. That's a pretty shitty job <coughs> to have. And it's a pretty shitty job to have because you can't make a sandwich. I mean, I'm really good at making sandwiches, but that just might be because I'm a woman and that's a stereotypical thing. But I'm just telling you. I do, you know what, I feel bad for them, but at the same time, they kind of get cocky with themselves. You know when you go to a subway and you get your, your sub and you feel really empowered because you're picking everything that goes on it, and then you get to that like vegetable line and they're like, lettuce, tomato, onion, and you're like, bitch, I will tell you what I want. <laughs> And that's exactly what you want is let us demand on you. You're not gonna let them win that game. You wear the pants in this relationship. You say let us demand on you and you're like, oh, I'm gonna have onion. Mm, yeah, you're right, that tomato does look pretty good there, John. Why don't you put that on there as well? You know what, now that you mention it, lettuce sounds great. Those people, you know, you gotta take control of. The people that I do envy a lot are waitresses that memorize every side and special that they have for that evening. You ever have that? And this is something my sister Lexi does all the time. She doesn't appreciate the effort that goes into that. You know you want french fries as your side, but she goes, okay, one steak medium, and let me just tell you what our sides are for this evening. We have French fries, vegetables, soup, applesauce, a nice rice pilaf if you're interested. And we all sit there, y'all think you're not actors, but we all sit there like this. <laughs> and French fries is the first thing she said. And now you're nervous and you're like, 
don't want to be the bitch that's like, oh, she said french fries first, I just made her list off everything. This is what my sister does to me when I'm looking up here, real honest. My sister goes, french fries. French fries, you want french fries? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you want french fries, french fries. Ounce fillet, just kidding, it's 11 ounce, I'm always get the 11 ounce fillet. <laughs> she's like, how do you want that done? And I'm like, mm, like, she's like, medium, 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 medium. <laughs> it's awkward with a waitress. Like, you don't want to like step on their toes, they took the time to memorize what they're giving you today. And the worst is when you get that, uh, you go to Olive Garden and they have that delicious grater of Parmesan cheese. <laughs> the best they do, right? It's the best thing in the entire world. You want to just bury your face in that cheese, and they go, ah, just say when. And you, the appropriate time, if you're not aware, is about a five, to five to seven seconds of just them grading. For me. <laughs> the appropriate. What you really want is the whole thing, but it gets awkward. You're like, just say when. <laughs> Start grading into their hand, like. <laughs> up at them like, did I say what? <laughs> Start sucking their whole uniform in there. Please, I have a family! <laughs> now, nah, but seriously, if you work at Bullet, that's a really shitty <laughs> But that's the worst job ever, though. I'll tell you what the best job is. Being a weatherman. Is this not a stand-up comedy show yet? We're gonna talk about weather. <laughs> no, stay with me guys, this is a hell of a transition. But being a weatherman is awesome. Because, you're gonna hear this so many times, you can be wrong 80% of the time and still keep your job. That's pretty great, right? And you're getting television time. There are some downfalls though. And I will tell you, for some reason, the news anchors like to take out all their anger on the poor weatherman. <laughs> It might just, excuse you, it might just be, <laughs> it might just be because they have to change personalities every three seconds with that teleprompter scrolling, you know, they never know what's going to come up. It's really stressful, you know, all the news anchors are like, and there were no survivors, but next, find out which chocolate bar helped you lose weight. <laughs> shows that surveys in America are disturbing. <laughs> but also a rescue dog shows off its new tricks to its family. <laughs> and death and destruction comes to our country. <laughs> so they fired over to the weatherman and they're like, and now we're going to go over to Johnny with the weather. Johnny, when are you going to stop this rain and bring us some sunshine? <laughs> I'll stop the rain when you stop the carjackings, Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> then you have the poor weather guys that are like the interns that get thrown out in the field, you know? When it's like, do not go outside! The biggest storm in history is here! Stay indoors! Whatever you do, stay indoors! And we're gonna go to Johnny, he's out in the middle of it. It's like holding on to the nearest palm tree. <laughs> the worst is when they travel to like go to Florida or some terrible place like that. They're standing in the middle of like a tornado and it's their big time to shine and the mic doesn't go through. <laughs> and the anchor guys don't even give them a chance. It's like now we're going to go over to Johnny on the big storm in Florida. Johnny, how's it going out there? <laughs> And unfortunately, we have some technical difficulties. Johnny, stay dry. <laughs> Hands are falling down. Give me a second. <laughs> now, if it does go through, it is awkward enough, though, because there is, for some reason, in 2017, we can't get the sound to go directly to their ear in the time that they say it. And everyone tries to keep a really serious face, like, Johnny, that, that big incident that happened out there, he's sitting out there in the field. Johnny, you want to tell us what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I guess it is kind of shitty being a weatherman. I don't know why I wrote that shit. It's not a good job at all. Uh, I have a good job for you. It's, it's like the professional side of being a weatherman. <laughs> being the guy that gets to name the hurricanes. Seriously, I'm looking into the credentials needed for this. Before we all start thinking I'm some dumb theater major, I know hurricanes get named in alphabetical order. Okay, I know that. <laughs> but in my perfect world, there is a job and you're called a hurricane namologist and it is the greatest thing in the entire world. <laughs> like, we got a big storm coming through and I'm like, ah, let me get my name book out. And these assholes picked the lamest, non-threatening name in the entire world. Y'all remember Gert? <laughs> Who in their right mind is going to name a hurricane Gert? <laughs> Woo! Hurricane Gert storm! <laughs> Board up your doors! <laughs> Poor hurricane waited its whole life to destroy shit. And that asshole Gert It's like a queef on a yoga ball. <laughs> named after Steve Harvey. They're all like, he's fine, it's gonna be category one, don't even worry, your picnic can go on. Harvey comes through and just destroys shit. <laughs> Turns around and he's like, I'm sorry, it said on the card, I was supposed to be a one. <laughs> I was really a five. <laughs> my bad. Not my bad. <laughs> Four years now. Hopefully that's as long as I'll be here. That's what my parents are saying too. Yeah, that's right. That's so correct. What are you? What year are we on now? Eight, nine. Uh, five. Five. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I really. I've had some really good times here at Gettysburg. I'm really happy I came here. I had my best days. Had my worst days. Of everything in between. My first day of freshman year, first first week of classes. I just feel so inappropriate, like drinking, not getting, like talking about my classes. <laughs> do they not go hand in hand though? I think they do. <laughs> uh, so my first week of classes, really stressed. I'm like trying to adjust to college, like playing a sport, all that shit. And I go up to my professor and I say, "Hey, listen, I'm like really having a hard time. Um, I would just love some advice." And they looked at me and they said, "Haley." The first four years of college are the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. <laughs> no, no, they're not that bad. Uh, I couldn't have done it, though, without my friends. My friends, honestly, they, they get me through all that. You guys all know who you are. Um, special shout out to my best friend and my roommate, Evan. He's really great. <laughs> Now he's really great. I met him my freshman year, and he's my rock man. He's my roommate. You guys are all going, whoa, Haley, a roommate with a boy. <laughs> hey, you see this? You wish you were room with us too. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. My sister moved out. My parents were like, get yourself a roommate, and I was like, I will get myself. A roommate. <laughs> and his name is Evan. <laughs> Things are gonna be great. And it's like, oh, well, like, how fun is that? I'm like, well, we barely get any sleep. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Bob Ross is way too exciting to turn off. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a big deal when everyone's like rooming with a boy, but it's. It's Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah, my other two friends, uh, best friends, are Lindsay and Brooke. They're both sitting right there. But I, I love them to death. They're my family. Lindsay is the smartest person in the entire world. She will, without a doubt, save this planet from all the death and destruction that's going on. <laughs> she's stressed and wears the damn noose around her neck all day. And she's like, I can't do it. I'm so stressed. <laughs> Lindsay, it's cool. We try to have one night we're gonna play cards. 
And she was like, I'm like, Lindsay, we'll do like an old-fashioned game. We'll play cards, and we'll just, you know, we'll bring it out. She goes, great, I have a really fun game. I'm going to play Rummy. <laughs> was that it, Rummy? Yeah. yeah. Who here has played Rummy? <laughs> okay, screw, oh, okay, great. <laughs> okay, so everyone here has played Rummy. I've never played Rummy before. And I was like, Lindsay, just do me a favor. I really want to participate in this game. Please explain it. She goes, okay, it's really great. All you have to do is you have to be doing something at all times. You pick one up, put one down, unless it's a full moon on Tuesday and you don't touch anything. And if your favorite color's blue, go get the salt shaker. And then if you have an ace, you lay it down. If you don't have an ace, forget it. Okay, we ready to play it? I was like, oh. So you got go fish sound pretty fun at anybody else? Oh, she's great. My friend Brooke, also going to say it again. 100% going to be a president of the United States, and she will be the first president with webbed toes, so. <laughs> it's really weird, it freaked me out. She was like a really good friend of me, and then she showed me her feet, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> talking shit about another person, they're the worst people ever. <laughs> they always kind of like push whatever mood you're in forward, you know? And say like you, you're, if you're in a relationship with a guy and they're like, Haley, how's it going? I've never been in a relationship with a guy, let's just make that clear. <laughs> I'm just hypothetically thinking because I know you're all thinking about it, okay? <laughs> they're like, Haley, how's it going? It's great, everything's going well. They're like, he's great, you're great, you're beautiful, everything you do is special. <laughs> everything is wonderful, like you deserve this, like enjoy it, you know? One bad thing happens and they're like, he's a dick. <laughs> telling you you're great, you might start to think that you're always great. And as, as awesome as it is, it's important to know that sometimes you can be an asshole. <laughs> you have to be self-aware of that. Because there will be a time when someone's like, you're kind of being an asshole. And you're like, no, I'm not. Well, guess what? It's not up to you. <laughs> you need to know. You need to know. <laughs> so I'm a theater major. Obviously. <laughs> it don't make sociology majors stand up here and do this. Or bio majors, Lindsay's shows next week. <laughs> now, there's a lot of things that inspire me to follow a career in entertaining people. I really love it. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, there's that. Um, <laughs> but one of the big things was uh, I did an internship my junior and senior year of high school. I did with my friend Drew, who, I don't know where did he leave? He was out here earlier. He left. He's gone. Anyway. Oh, he's out there. Hey, Drew. Um, yeah, we did an internship together at a, at a professional theater. It was really fun. Um, as much as I thought I'd be acting, I did a lot of, like, mopping studios and, like, picking glass out of the driveway and <laughs> stuff like that. But I did have some time to shine. There's a big, uh, big performance they do there. It's called the Murder Mystery Weekends. And it's basically a weekend of a murder mystery. Shocker. It's a weekend to die for. Ooh, that old chestnut. Yeah. Oh, it's really cool when they were like, uh, Haley, you're gonna be in the show. I was like, me? Great. And they're like, you're gonna play Joey the Thug and you're gonna die. And then after that, you're gonna be a killer because no one else wants to do that. And I was like, oh, great, great. Do I get paid? And they're like, go get my copy. <laughs> so my first day of rehearsals, I walked down with my director, and I'm, I'm learning all my script for Joey the Thug. He's like, okay, listen, kid, all you gotta do is you're gonna stand in these doors, and when you hear your cue, you're gonna come out.